under the products category, we have products and add new. We don't have any products yet, so there's nothing to look at. Let's click on add new. We have then a lot to fill out here. If we scroll down, we've got a lot to look at. So we'll get started. Uh, at the top, we need a product name. Let's say for the moment we are going to sell pecan pies. So pecan pie is one of the products we'll sell. We type its name, and then in the box, so this looks just like creating a page or creating a, a post. It needs a title, it needs some text. Here under the text, obviously, you would put whatever you want. You have bullet points and bold and pictures, whatever. You have just like any old page or post. That's nothing new. What's new then now on the right side is we have the publish box. That's nothing new as well. But what's new is product tags and product categories. So this particular product, of course, then would be tagged or categorized under pies. So select pies. And notice you can select more than one category at once but most likely you've created these organizational units because they describe the product. Over on product tags here, um, as you use these tags more and more, this will show up under choose most. Uh, but if I started to type a, a tag, it could appear there. I don't have any chocolate, really this is not a chocolate pecan pie, it's just a pecan pie. So I might not really give it any tags, uh, so to speak. But definitely a category. So I'll leave tags alone, but I'll add a category. SEO Yoast. This is a box. I believe I mentioned it when we talk about, talked about the SEO plugin via Yoast. This is to fully optimize. What does this look like when people search um, uh, on the search engine? We'll get to it in more detail a little bit later. But this is something very valuable here that will explain how well have you optimized this to get found by the search engines. This will give you red problems, orange, okay, and green, good results. We'll talk about it in detail later, but this whole section of Yoast is very valuable. We have featured image. Depending on the theme, this picture may show up prominently or not. I want to see what it looks like, so I will, under featured image, click set featured image, and if you've got any pictures in your library, you can select them, or you can upload a new one. For practice, I will select to upload a new image. And we've got some sample pictures you can, you can get to on the left panel. If you scroll up to the top and find pictures, none of them really are of pecan pies. If you'd like to go off to the web and go borrow a picture of pecan pie, sure. But I'm just going to grab any picture. None of these make sense, but I'm going to add a picture here. That's my featured image. Depending on the theme, it may show that picture nice and big. It may show it as a thumbnail. It may not show it at all. It's going to depend on the theme. You won't know what it is until you try it. Some other good stuff here. Price. We've got price and sale price. So let's say, and I, and I don't know the prices of these things, so let's just say this is a, this is a $10 pie. $10. But maybe I'm selling it for $8. So what will happen is it'll show $10 on sale for $8. it will show both prices. You just want the flat price with no sale price or whatever, you can leave sale price empty. Um, currency, you can change the price of your product depending on your currency or let it take care of itself via PayPal. Quantity discount, well, if a person buys three of them, then that means that each of them I could sell them for $9. So this is that time, that, that time, that old time technique of tricking people into buying more by thinking they're saving more, but you're really buying more because obviously here you have to buy twenty-seven dollars worth of merchandise to save, whereas if you bought one, you only pay ten dollars. Do you really need three pies? Well, if you needed three pies, that's a good discount, but um, depending on what you're buying. Let's just say for fun, that'll be that. If this is a donation, you can turn that on. This is not. This is a regular kind of product. If it's a donation, you can turn it on. Stock inventory. We have SKU, which is stock keeping unit. 
What this is is just something completely internal. Maybe you have a database of all your products, right? A list of all your products, and they're all marked with a particular code. So the unique code. Let's say this is a pi, so it's going to be p, and then all pecans are 1, and then this is pi style 1. Let's say later I'm selling a different pi, and it's a... Uh, an apple pie. So that would be, I don't know, P2 and it's style 3. So whatever system you set up here, the users will not see it. This is just internal. Do you have limited stock? If you activate that, that means you've only got three of them to sell. If you have limited stock, well, let me know. Send me an email. Remember in the settings, administrator, send me an email when the stock runs out so I can deal with it. If my product runs out, remove it from the store. Well, it's off by default and either or will work, but it depends what you want because if you leave this off, people will see that that product is sold out. That may be good. That may be good because then people will see this product used to be available. Maybe it'll be available later. Maybe I'll come back. This will show people what they've missed. Maybe you don't want that at all, just turn it off and the product will go away. If you don't want any of that, you just turn it off and you have unlimited of that, of that product. Taxes. Product is exempt from taxation. If you don't want our tax system in place, turn it off. If you do want it, leave it on. And if you want to tax this particular item in a very special way, you can set that in there directly. Back in the middle column, if I go up a little, I'll see variations. This takes a little bit of setup. We'll get to it a little later. The variations are, for example, if I'm selling, uh, if I'm selling T-shirts, and um, I have obviously large, medium, and small T-shirts, those are variations. These are all different versions of the same item: large, medium, and small variations. We will do this later with cakes, for example, large, medium, and small cake. But we'll get to it later. It needs a little setup. product delivery. Shipping. Products will not be shipped to customer. That's where you turn that on so that you've got a digital product so that they don't accidentally get charged for shipping. If I've chosen to select one of the uh, tax bands or shipping systems, I could then say, was that shipping system based on weight or dimensions? This is going to weigh, I don't know, two pounds, how much does a pie weigh? Anyway, so I can set that value there. That'll then be used to calculate how much shipping is. Local, local shipping fee international. Again, flat rate. You can go with dimensions. Then we have this. This only applies to to certain people, depending what you're selling. But if you then look at download, if you're selling your song, if you're selling your PowerPoint presentation, if you're selling your ebook, that's what this is all about. Upload a file, add an existing file, etc. You can add more than one. So when someone buys something, they'll get an email that says, click here for your product. And there's your product, and they're secure. No one can uh, download it. No one can download it in, uh, and, and after the, until they've bought. And so yes.
Yeah. Um, I think that's a special case, and it might not be very easy to set up with the default plugin. There might be an extra an, an extension that we can add to it. I haven't thought about that, but there there might be a way to do it with what's built in here and make it secure. But you're right, it could be that you give that to several people. I mean, one person passes it out to several people and suddenly you give away too many gift certificates. It could be um, tricky. <clears throat> On mine, for some reason, it's kind of overlapping, but I see here external link. Under external link. This is, again, th this is not for too many people. Let me give you an example of how I've done this in the real world. We had a client a few years ago that he was an author. He was selling uh, his ebooks, But he had some copies that were physical books, and he had some that were digital books. So some of his books, he would sign them and, and sell them and ship them. They were a real product. But some products, some versions of the book, he would sell over through Amazon. Or some other bookseller. So in that case, that product, we would need to fill this in here. What's the address of that external product? Maybe add a label to it. And what will happen is this option will override the buy now and add to cart buttons. So that product was being sold over at Amazon, not on his store. So this external link would take over. There wouldn't be add to cart, there wouldn't be buy now. They would it would be the button that's there, and it would say something like, buy at Amazon. And it would take the person over to Amazon to complete the purchase. Again, most of you don't need this. The store that you're creating is all self-contained in this site. But if you needed that external, there it is. The next box, product details. If I'd like to add an image gallery, more than one picture, maybe the front side, the profile side, the back side, different views of a particular product, I can add, I can create an image gallery. Depending on the theme, this short description might appear in various ways. Because we might not know really how does it look like in this particular theme. What I will do is I will just write something like this is the short description. Then we have personalization. This is going to depend again. Users can personalize this product by leaving a message. So when they're going to buy a product, there'll be a spot for them to, to leave a message about it. Like if this was a birthday cake and I wanted, uh, if they wanted my company to add a personalization, happy birthday, Billy, then I could turn that on. Users can upload an image. Again, if this is a like a birthday cake and they want to add a particular design, I can activate that and then they can upload their own photo. The problem with this, of course, is that are you going to accept copyrighted material? Are you going to let someone upload that Spongebob picture to put on the cake? Technically you shouldn't because you don't own the copyright to Spongebob to put it on a cake. So these two are off and if you'd like to use them you can turn them on. In metadata, depending on your theme and other things, this is pretty advanced. I would I would not worry about this. This is just more features to uh, to make your product uh, more powerful. The listing and such. And then discussion, allow comments, yes or no, you can decide that. At the top right corner, then you want to publish. 
And then you want to visit site. Visit site and go to the bakery store. Here's my first product, pecan pie. If I click on the product, it shows it to me nice and big because the original image was large and then I had said this size of picture. More details. Oh, that's where the short description goes. The long description that I wrote is there. Choose a quantity, price, shipping, average customer ratings, add to cart. Your rating, I'm going to give it five stars. Add to cart, if you click on that, you get a pop-up. Go to checkout, continue shopping. Go to checkout. Here's my checkout screen, now it's populated. See the product, its name, quantity, price, etc. Calculate my shipping, all of that. Notice I only selected Canada, Mexico, USA. dollars, etc. And then all of that that I need to fill in. Email, last name, first name, there's your Twitter username, box, shipping, same as billing, payment type, pay securely with PayPal, test payment, I agree to the terms and conditions, I can't proceed until I, until I see this, and if I click on that it pops up to tell me here's what I Here's what I wrote for that. If I'm not in the shopping, in the checkout screen, let's say I'm over at the blog. I'm reading the blog at the very, uh, at the very bottom or contact page or whatever. It should show then the widget down there. Here's what's currently in my cart. Go check out, clear the cart. Let's go back to uh, our products. Just go to all products. We have one product. We can see it quickly. We can do quick edit. We can change a variety of things very quickly. If we go to full edit here. We can change everything about it. Let's uh, create another product and then put it in a different uh, category. So at the top, under Products, Add New, this time we'll do a birthday cake. You can put any tags you'd like. This one goes under Cakes Categories. Uh, I won't put an image this time, maybe. I'll put a price, let's say normal price $10, but I'm s selling this one discount 8 Skew. Leave taxes. Again, we'll deal with variations soon. So you experiment a little bit maybe with uh, adding any of these items. So here, this will be a little practice here. You add a uh, brand new 
product of a cake and of a cookie. See how that works. So add a new cake product and a new uh, cookie product. So here then you should see that it depends on your product what these different items are. You should see that categories and tags are for organization. You have a featured image depending on the theme. Prices and all of these details depending on your product. Once you start to add products to your shop, you see here birthday cake B. I put it simply alphabetical so that's first then giant cookie that's next, and then pecan pie. If I wanted them in the order of when I uploaded them, I could do that. If I wanted them in the order like that I specify, I can drag and drop their order over on the products screen. Um, this particular theme also, let's say here pecan pie, if I click on the name of the product, notice all of these product names are an active link. That was what one of those settings was. Deactivate link in title, yes or no? And I said to leave it on, because what happens is if you click on the name of a product, it'll then show you that one product. And notice the address says product page pies pecan pie. At this point here, it just says products page. And if I click on a particular product, the featured image gets a lot bigger to focus on it. And there's another smaller version of it. And then whatever text I wrote, notice how the short description appears a little different. Quantity, price, shipping, etc. I want to add three of these birthday cakes, so let's say four, add to cart, down at the bottom, it also then tells me I've added something new that was dynamic, so birthday cake, I've got four of them, $32, from here I can remove something, go to checkout. The way that this all looks and behaves is based on the theme. This particular basic theme, maybe it doesn't look that nice or it isn't that powerful. There are plenty of other themes that are more focused on e-commerce. So I can go back to appearance, add a 
appearance ad um, theme and choose a theme that's a little bit more e-commerce friendly. This one is fine for the moment, but it doesn't quite focus too much on my e-commerce. And so we're starting to get there. We're starting to work with products. One of the powerful things is going to be variations, and we can also deal with coupons. Those are the first things we'll look at next, next time as we, as we start the day. We're running toward the end of the day today. So I'll take general questions, then we'll do the duplicator backup, and then we'll wrap up, because next time we have to talk about variations and coupons. So any general questions up to, to this point? Okay, let's uh, go over through our process. Sheet number four again to back up our site. We've done it a few times. We'll do it one more time together. We want to go over to duplicator screen and go to packages. Click on the top right, create new. I'll add a note that'll say WP e-commerce added, some categories created, added three products, set up settings, to do. What's the next thing to do is that uh, set up coupons and variations. That's what I want to work with next time. So any notes you want here, or none. And then uh, click Next. It should scan the server, everything should be good. The site's gonna get a little bit larger as we start to add more uh, as we start to add more products. It's normal. Click build. Once that finishes, then you'll have the zip file and the installer file that you need to download and save to your flash drive. I'll save a copy of mine into the network folder when mine is done, and then we'll, we'll call it a day. We'll have a little bit of lab time until 9.30, and then uh, we'll wrap up, and then we'll do it again next time. So remember to request the videos if you don't have them, and um, we'll do a little lab time. We'll do it again next week.